Unlike most people on Halloween 2022, who will be playing traditional scary games and getting themselves scared shitless, I'll be playing Vampire Survivors instead. This game has recently come out of early access and it's taken Steam by storm. It is, alongside for me, Brotato, the best action roguelikes that I've played in 2022. And it is a bullet hell survivor game that revolves around one or two very specific things combined. Scale and satisfaction. As you scale up your character across six different weapons and six different passive abilities that you choose as you level up, the game will continue to throw tens to hundreds of enemies at you all at once, marching towards you ridiculously, firing all kinds of projectiles. It's less of a bullet hell style game, more of a stop the horde style game, because there will be hundreds of things coming towards you on screen and you'll need to be nimble and be powered up enough to be able to cope with that as you go along. All of this is down to the choices that you make as you collect the gems that are around the screen to level up your character. Each time you level up, you'll be given three and later on four choices if you level up your luck skills so that you can then choose what of those things you want to upgrade on. Now, how this then works means that if you, say, go for a lot of uh, tight knit attacks, that might mean that you're not able to get rid of some of the horde far away and you have some powerful but maybe quite niche attacks and it will leave you from attack from behind for example. Some of the other things like the lightning ring um, or the water that creates damage areas are great for the ranged stuff but you might then be caught up for attack if you wander into like an area of enemies that are going to take you damage as you try and escape and run away from them. The game is constantly evolving and throwing waves and waves and waves of enemies at you. And so being able to be nimble and move around and have that duality between what is ranged and what is melee damage, basically, is going to be really, really uh, difficult to manage. But your choice is build out your loadout and some characters work well as melee versus ranged versus more magic-y. Some of them have got projectile based attacks. Some of them have got things that will bounce off of walls and that's only good in a certain few uh, types of level layouts. So it's really up to you to build the character how you want. Alongside this you've also got the ability to mix and match not just your weapons but your passive abilities. So um, some of these then combine to create like ultimate versions of weapons. So for example having the duality, um, sorry the lightning ring and the um, extra projectile um, durability kind of circle allows you to create like an absolutely mammoth thundering lightning ring that brings out its ultimate attack. But you can only really get that if you've got both of those things attached to your character at one time. Later on, additional things start to uh, be unlocked, such as the ability to skip upgrades and collect more um, experience as a result. And being able to um, sell back some of your uh, weapons as well to take different upgrade routes as you go through the game, which is quite cool. If you're able to complete... Um, a specific run through and it will take about between 15 to 30 minutes depending on that run. What you'll then do is be able to unlock additional harder modes where not only do you have less HP but the enemies can actually have like a curse on you which means that you'll get up to like 50% more enemies coming at you at the same time and that's really where the difficulty in Vampire Survivors comes from because largely if you're able to stay nimble and stay ahead of the horde as they kind of move and navigate around you you can survive the vast majority of the way but then you might just have a few missteps during the last say couple of minutes where it is so full on that you'll keel over and conk out at the end. There is an overarching roguelike upgrade system for your base characters as you go along. And there's like over 140 achievements at the moment to Steam. And what they do is they unlock either additional weapons, additional characters for you to then buy with the gold that you collect throughout your runs. But also you can then spend this gold on your like permanent upgrades. So that upgrades their starter health, damage, 
um, speed of attack, speed of movement, uh, whether they regenerate any HP over time or not. Um, and then you can put in things like re-rolling uh, the different um, choices that you get when you level up um, or the ability to skip them, those kind of things. They all come later on in the game. So you do have to grind a little bit to get some of that um, additional uh, options and strategies being made available to you. But Vampire Survivors constantly just provides satisfaction in the scale of just how much is coming at you on screen at once that it's just oddly satisfying. Yes, the gameplay is uh, monotonous and by design repetitive, but it's that satisfaction of seeing yourself go from just someone who's got like a really itsy bitsy like knife throwing out at the beginning to being an absolute juggernaut behemoth at the end where you can just wander around the screen causing carnage and seeing like 150 enemies all die in one attack. And you're like, ma ma <laughs> So, yeah, it's I, I'd, I'd almost liken this to a clicker game in terms of the way how satisfaction is and dopamine is given to you. But obviously, this is much more hands on. There is skill in the gameplay. I would argue if you're looking at this or Brotato, Brotato is more difficult and has um, uh, more going on for the player to actually have to deal with. Whereas Vampire Survivors, even though there's more going on on screen in terms of scale, the difficulty curve is much easier to manage because you're always upgrading as you kind of go along. However, Vampire Survivors has more in terms of impressive scale going on on screen. So it's horses for courses. I think there's room for both in your gameplay libraries if you have the chance because both are under four pounds for buying and both deserve your time. So yeah, Vampire Survivors, my choice for Halloween 2022. You guys take care. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com. Bye bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.